And would you announce your name, please, and your uh, title here? Gilles Dagnelli, okay. and I'm an associate professor of ophthalmology at the Wilmer Eye Institute, and okay. my research is in the area of retinal degenerations, like Dr. Bittner. Thank you. And the uh, disease that I work with principally is called retinitis pigmentosa. She already mentioned that. It's an inherited disease. Either one of your parents has it, has one bad copy of a gene. If you inherit that copy, you're out of luck, you have the disease. But sometimes, and actually in the majority of cases, both parents have one bad gene. They don't know it because it's a recessive disease, and only if the kid gets both copies, both bad copies, they get the disease. Mm -hmm. Well, if you get the disease, you lose your night vision when you're a child, usually. And then you start losing your peripheral vision. Actually, that peripheral vision loss may come on at a later age. So sometimes it's in childhood or in high school or in college, but sometimes it's in middle age. So it really depends on which particular gene mutation or whatever your other circumstances are when it starts. But once it starts, it progresses. There's nothing you can do. You can take vitamins, you can do all kinds of things to protect yourself from the sun. It progresses. And so these people lose their peripheral vision. It becomes narrow and narrow. They have tunnel vision. Their central vision usually is still quite good. They can read without a problem, but they bump into things. They trip over things. So they have to start using a cane or sometimes even a guide dog, even though they can still see. So you see a person walking with a cane, sit down on the bus and read the newspaper. Very strange, but it happens. So um, once they lose all their vision, which happens in about, I would say probably about 30% of people lose all their vision during their lifetime, mm. there's nothing that can be done to restore it except we now have this electronic implant called the retinal implant. And this is very similar to a cochlear implant, you know, where mm -hmm. the hair cells degenerate, the secondary cells in the inner ear are still there. You put a little bundle of wires in there, and people can learn to hear again. Little kids who've never had hearing, if they get implanted before one year of age, they can learn to hear. Well, that took 30 years to develop. And we are now where they were 30 years ago. It's taken us 20 years to go from the first principle when we did experiments here in the operating room in Wilmer with the patient was blind take a little wire, put it in the back of the eye under local anesthesia, and the patient said, yeah, I see a dot of light when you're stimulating. And so we knew, well, one electrode will give you a dot of light. If you can make many dots, you have a computer screen or a television screen, right? It only takes a million dots. Well, how do you get a million dots into the eye? That's not going to work. Right now, we're at 60. And we're actually very proud that we are at 60. So the way it works is you have this pair of glasses with a tiny little camera in the front, takes a video image, that sends down this cable to this belt pack processor. And what the processor does is, driven by this battery, it takes the video image, pairs it down to six by 10 dots. Six by 10 dots signal goes up the cable with the energy to this antenna here, this disc. And there's a secondary antenna on the outside of the eye that picks up the energy and the signal. There's a little capsule that has electronics in it, splits out the 60 signals, that gets sent through the wall of the eye. It is a the wall of the eye. There's a little cable, a ribbon cable, that goes into the eye to the back of the retina. Okay. okay. The device is held in place by a tiny little prong, and there's the 60 little wires that stimulate the retina. So patients can see. They don't see 60 crisp dots. They see a very blurry picture, but they can tell that there's four guys standing here or four dark outlines. They can see that there's a window there. They can walk down the hall. They can see that there's, if they look a little closer, they can see that there's a box on the table there because it has good contrast. They can't really tell what the box is, mm -hmm. but they can go up to it and pick it up. And when they're walking around with their king, they can see that there's a building across the street and that's where they want to go. The king can't tell them that. So even that little bit of vision can be extremely helpful. We did a clinical trial that started in 2007. 14 people were implanted in the U.S., 16 in Europe. Three years later, uh, the company that's in California submitted a request with the European Regulatory Agency for approval in Europe and got it. So they started doing implants clinically in Europe a year ago. They've done 20. And now they have a positive advice from the uh, FDA panel. So hopefully by next year we'll be starting to do it just clinically in the U.S. as well. There are a number of other groups around the world that are developing similar devices, but this is the first one that's going to be. Right. So these stimulate.